Good afternoon. Let's start with a word of prayer. Dear God, we are very thankful to you that you have given us this wonderful opportunity to learn from your word, understand, and get enlightened through the word, Lord, to live a life for your sake and to be blessed through it, Lord. Lord, we request your presence. We ask you to help us understand the word that is coming from you, Lord. Help me through the words so that whatever comes out of my mouth, Lord, bring glory to your name and your name only. In Jesus Christ's matchless name I pray. Amen. Today, we will try to study a bit from the book of Job. We've been studying the book of Job for a very long time. Uh, every now and then, we do go back to the book of Job. A lot of insight comes to us from that, that book. So let me start to look into the word of God in a different way, not in a different way, but maybe a little different angle of what we can learn from the book of Job. Now the book of Job starts with declaring Job a man who fears God and avoids evil. And this is what God says about him. And then we go on to see Job was a perfect man in, a, in some sense. Uh, all things he had, uh, wealth, uh, he had a big family, uh, he had a big name, everybody knew him, he was a man who was honored around. And when we look at Job and Job's life, we see a man, you know, somewhere close to perfection. This is what we look forward to become, be a man. And even in godly sense, this is what God said. But then there is a story that's happening wherein Job is not involved. He doesn't know what's happening around. Where Satan comes and asks God about Job. When God says, have you seen my servant Job? And then he goes on to argue that he's only doing all this because you have kept a fence around him, his family, his wealth, and his honor. Let me touch that. God allows it. And then we know how the story moves on. So we'll try to understand a little bit from that story. God has already told us things about Job, what kind of person he was. Now, the first thing that comes into our mind is when Satan started touching him, the first thing he took away was his wealth. We see all his wealth being taken away, only the servants running to him and declaring the bad news, bringing the sad story. This is, this is what has happened. You've lost everything. Everything has been taken away from you. And we see Job still standing tall in the name of God, depending on God, trusting on God. The second thing what we see is Satan touching his family and so on. And all this while, Job has kept his trust in God. So there are some things that we need to ask, and they are asked for us by the friends of Job. We see Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar coming to console Job when he has lost his wealth, when he has lost his family, and moreover, when he has lost his health as well. And we see those three men, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, and later Elihu, the younger one, also joining in the party. The first thing they did was to come there and sit quietly with Job for almost a week. And that's what best they could do and offer to Job. It's a very wonderful thing. It's a very, it's a very supporting thing, a consoling, comforting thing. When something goes wrong, and we see our family, relatives, and friends coming together and assuring us that they are with us. This is what the assurance these friends came up with when they were quiet for the first week. And then, slowly, slowly, all four started talking. 
and the force and the direction of their talk was god is punishing job god is punishing job there surely is something some sort of a sin that job is into maybe he is hiding it friends don't know people don't know but there is something wrong in job's life and that's the reason god is punishing job this is what the whole argument was they said god is fair and god is just rightly so god is fair and god is just and this is what the argument they put forward god has everything under his authority it's like god working like a mechanical device when you do wrong you get punished but the bible says the word of god himself god himself tells us your ways are not my ways god does think differently higher than what we can even imagine here the friends use these argument but in a very wrong context job is pleading himself not guilty he is saying there is nothing wrong i did everything that was right i have not wavered out of the way of god i have always kept myself right and this these friends are trying to argue saying god is fair and just there is definitely something wrong with you there is there is something you have missed the mark and that is the reason this kind of calamity has come on you god does punish evil yes he does punish evil but most of the time the evil calamities the affliction that comes to us is more to bring us back to him last sunday we did listen to the story of the prodigal son calamity came calamity did come but they made way for the son to understand where he is and where he should be he realizes his mistake and says to himself i need to go back to my father the calamity is the affliction opened a door back to god so here as well we need to understand god does punish evil but moreover it is a there there are two things now we can we can think of first of all when i was uh, trying to understand this chapter these are there are rules through which the world works there are rules given for everything we have gravity and so we have spiritual rules and regulations as well so in that sense in that context when we see these friends are trying to you know make a rule out of it that whenever you go wrong you're going to get punished but here we see a different thing job otherwise is not wrong but still being punished not punished but still being afflicted coming back what is job left with so what he had we'll start with that we'll look forward to see we see god calling him a, a person who fears god and avoids evil he had wealth he had a big family he had name and reputation and god declaring all good things about him spiritually as well all taken away moreover what we see is his wife too comes forward and asks him to curse god's name and die health oh sorry wealth gone friends are there but they are not of any use they are not really consoling him they are not comforting him moreover they are asking him that something is wrong with him and he is questioning himself he is wondering what did he do wrong or where did he go wrong that all these calamities have come on him A wife we have seen what is job's reply to his wife he says should we only ask good from god he is still kept a right with god and lastly we see all health and everything been taken everything we can trust on 
as human being we depend on wealth as human being we depend on our relatives and friends as human being we depend on our family wife husband children we depend on our health but when all is taken away what remains what remains job's condition has really gone so bad that he does come up with a thought that i curse the day i was born boils miserable and painful this is what job is left with only life existence that's what it's a very difficult thing for us to imagine ourselves like that what would we do when we come in situation like that all gone comes the deepest questions of life why was i born who am i who is god where is god life after death can man really know god all these questions come to us when we are going through those deep dark nights of misery affliction and all these answers for job then were difficult but we have all the answers in the new testaments in the new testament we have all the answers through christ as declared who is god and what is expected from us so what do we learn from this chapter this chapter we started off with wealth we started off with health then friends then wife and then everything that that job had was taken away moreover his friends came and judged him we learn we are not to judge people why because we don't know the real context only god knew the real story because he is penning it down he was the one who articulated everything job even job did not know it so we too many a times do not know what god is scripting for us like job we too need to trust job did come with questions and those questions were hurled at god why why me why is this happening to me god heard these song, heard these questions of job and came back not with answers but questions of greater value of greater understanding of greater depth that even job couldn't answer the only realization job had that day was yes god is in control he is more than i need and i can trust him even in this situation and any situation that could come to me i know my god lives and i can trust him to the end god can take care of any situation of ours don't judge others don't judge god as well and this is what we need to learn from these words that are coming from job's book god help us understand this word and help us rely on him more and more every day every moment because he is enough for us and he is more than enough for us may god help us may god bless us let's pray dear god we are thankful that you have kept everything that we need and through your word you feed us into your understanding we thank you lord for everything that you have given us help us understand what we have learned today help us implement all what we have learned today help us grow like job to trust you more and more to be blessed from you bless everyone who is with us today in jesus christ matchless name we pray amen thank you okay.